Hey, welcome to the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. Today we're going to talk about monarchs and what you can do in your own backyard to help save the monarchs. Uh, at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden, we spend a lot of time really focusing our plantings on helping wildlife, especially the pollinators. Uh, this is a rooftop garden at the top of our new Rue exhibit, and it's all about pollinators. Uh, so the plants that we've planted in this garden are very specifically chosen to attract all the different pollinators that are in our uh, general area. So plants like the Agastache, it's a beautiful Agastache called Blue Boa, but then we also have one called Blue Fortune and another one called Black Adder because we're a trials garden. We trial many different types of perennials so you can see what, you, what works in the greater Cincinnati area and then you can transfer that to your own backyard. So what we're here today to talk about is what you can do personally uh, for pollinators, especially the monarchs. So with all this diversity of plant material and the trialing program and all that we learn from it, uh, we're very uh, uh, interested in getting that information not only to the gardening public, but to growers, nurseries, garden centers, so we can have more and better ecosystems throughout the community which of course favors pollinators and is good for all of us. Um, it's really important to get that diverse material out there and it's amazing how much difference you can make in conservation just in your own backyard. Okay, now that we've learned a little bit about our pollinator gardens, let's go over to a specific garden, our butterfly garden. Let's learn about butterfly gardens. Here we are in the butterfly garden. In our butterfly garden, it's important when you create a butterfly garden in your backyard to have a wide diversity of plant material. We use everything from annuals, perennials, trees, shrubs. We even have vines. This is called the pipe vine. It's a native vine and it's important because it's the host plant to the pipe vine swallowtail. And the pipe vine swallowtail will actually feed on the pipe vine, lay their eggs, and the, the caterpillars will feed on the pipe vine. That's the only plant they feed on. And then when they, uh, uh, they, they come out as beautiful pipe vine swallowtails, and then they fly around, and then they need nectar. And that's where the nectar plants come in. And we've got plants like phlox. Uh, here's a verbena. Uh, and this is a plant called solidago, the, the goldenrod. Uh, these are all great nectar plants for butterflies in the late season. And that's one of the great parts about fall is there's so many great fall blooming plants. And uh, so just right here alone gives you a nice little display, uh, three or four plants that you can use in your backyard that will really help out the butterflies. One of the most important things you can do for pollinators is provide pollen all season long. They need to feed obviously from when they emerge in April or even March in some cases, all the way through late October, maybe to Thanksgiving. So you look for plants that provide flowers all season long or try to put those in your garden. One of the great choices is a shrub, uh, Abelia over here, which will bloom from roughly May, late May, all the way to frost. Uh, but your ace in the hole really would be annuals because that's what they're designed to do, is to bloom from when you put them in the ground, which would be Mother's Day for us, all the way to our first killing frost. So here we have lantana, it's one of the very best uh, 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 pollinator nectar producing uh, plants. And uh, we have some others here too. Uh, this is verbena bonariensis, or tall verbena, which is a very good plant for pollinators. And then we have pentis, uh, which all the butterflies and uh, other pollinators really love. Now some pollen uh, annuals are not as good as others, so here we have uh, impatience and it gets some visitation but not that much so you want to go on our website and look at our list of best plants for pollinators for the annuals you would use either in your containers or in your garden to provide nectar and pollen for our pollinator friends all season long now let's talk specifically about monarchs monarchs have a very specific plant diet they only feed on milkweed so any plant in the milkweed family that's butterfly weed swamp milkweed. Those are two milkweeds that you can get at your local garden centers. Uh, you need the milkweed for the monarchs to lay their eggs on and then for them to hatch and feed on milkweed. Uh, so that's what you need in your garden to make sure that you have spots for monarchs to be. Uh, 
Um, once you have the milkweed, then you can actually have plant some other plants for nectar sources that we talked about earlier for the monarchs to land on and feed on. So milkweed turns out to be one of the most important plants that you can use in your garden to attract monarchs. The other thing that's very important in your garden is to not spray pesticides. Uh, here at the zoo we have 70 acres of beautiful uh, gardens and we do not spray pesticides. In fact, sometimes you think you're spraying uh, insects that are eating your plants and sometimes those insects turn out to be the good ones. Uh, sometimes you're spraying for the tiger swallowtails and the monarchs without even realizing it. So it's best not to spray for insects in your yard. Uh, in fact, the more diverse plant material you have, the more flowering plants you have in your garden, that actually acts as an insecticide itself because there's a lot of predator insects that come in and feed on, on the insects that are feeding on your plants. So you really using a diverse set of flowers, uh, whether it's annuals, perennials, trees and shrubs, uh, and having a, that wide diversity, that's what protects uh, our gardens here at the zoo, and that's why we don't have to spray. So we encourage everyone to plant a wide diversity and don't spray for insects. So this is our pollinator garden, and you can see we have some beehives here. Uh, the various roles of the different pollinators is very interesting. So the, the bees are very good at pollinating plants, moving pollen from plant to plant. And of course that creates uh, our, our uh, abundance of food uh, for, for human beings, but also for wildlife. So that pollinates the plants, that makes the seeds and fruits, that feeds everything you see. Um, the wasps and flies that often you see on the, on the plants are actually very, very important because they also feed on pest insects. So they do double duty. They're, uh, they're enjoying the pollen and moving it around, but they're also keeping the ecosystem in balance. Then the butterflies, of course, uh, pollinate a little bit and they're very beautiful. And then older pollinators like beetles are great because they, they, they pollinate the more primitive plants like pawpaws and magnolias. So, uh, just remember, you need, to, you, you need to start gardening in your backyard, create these great spaces, uh, uh, have some fun with it. Uh, the green thumb myth is a myth. Anybody can garden. It's just relying on some basics. There's great resources out there, including our website and our outreach. We do have symposiums and classes all year long that can teach you how to do all the things that make you successful in the garden. So on behalf of uh, the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden and our sponsors, uh, Simple Truth, I'm Scott Berline, and please enjoy gardening.